all about. Maybe over to the right over there, there was some candidates. Uh, oh, they're in place. Okay. It doesn't even seem like there's a good place to get a purchase on anything to break. Yes, there's some littler ones. Yeah, you know, we want to. I think we want to avoid the nodules and get something more substantial okay. so that you know, there's. It's a rock for everyone in this collection. The about, Goldilocks uh, rock. How about, oh yeah, in here it looks, how yeah. about to the right too? Or, yeah. There actually looks like a bunch of options. Those right candidates, here. yep. This right. is where it flattens out, actually. If this isn't good, we can go to the upper right. I think we can find a candidate there. Give me a little bit of a zoom. This one in the foreground? Okay. Maybe not. Definitely look at that. So the, I think we might have to reposition again. Some of these rocks are kind of smallish. Um, to the upper right out of the frame, yeah, I there was it. a decent pile. Josh, what do you I think you can reach out? Uh, you okay. could try like just grabbing that and see. Grabbing the one I was just poking at. Yeah, just try okay. grabbing on both sides and give it a little, see if you can give it a wiggle. If the whole vehicle wiggles, then it probably won't. So, oh, my grip force is like three. Oh, well, yeah, you want to jam that up to nine. Yeah, I do. Yep. I want all the jam. You want all your all your grip force. Okay, that's better. Let's see if you can just gently kind of lift up a little bit. Cause that'll pull the vehicle down to the ground. A little asthma back and forth. No, that's not going to work. That guy's stuck. Okay. Up and to the right. I was thinking maybe in this area. Okay. If not there, then over here. We'll find something here.
Okay, this guy is picking up. But attached. This is positive enough for me to try to grab here. Looks attached, but. Thanks, video. It's the right thing. No. Nope. Uh, I I think that's that's it for this little area. I don't think anything else looks really spectacular. It's they're so deceptive. Like most of those looked very like breakable from a distance. Yeah, we can try going up a little bit more, I think. Okay. I remember you pointing to the left a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to find out where that is again. Maybe, maybe in this area. Again, it's really deceptive. I know. So, are the how friable are these rocks? Like, you can just break them off if they've got like a pre-existing like fracture. Yeah. Uh, what about this guy sitting on top here, lower left? This one. Yeah. Yeah, you can try. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would imagine, you know, they have varying states of alteration on the inside, but the outside is all kind of uniform, uniformly crust, um, and the crust is pretty friable stuff, uh, but the alteration may or may not be. I think that one might be... Oh... Uh, definitely, definitely get that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So I want this one, guys. Uh, how big is that? Well, it's pick it up. We'll find big. out. Big. Yeah. Let, let's uh, see with the lasers how yeah. big that is. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna guess it's like. That that'll be um like thirty five centimeters. Like that big. Yeah. Yeah. That might be a. Just pick it up and we'll yeah, throw in the laser. Rock. We do have a box for it. Yeah. Um, let's get an image of it before we pick it up. Uh, 30, 40 centimeters long? My guess is 45. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty big. Um, think it'll fit it in one of the starboard box compartments? Well, I, I can't tell right now. You got to pick it up for me to see. Yeah. Yeah. I'd hate to put it in there and then it's like stuck. Um, yeah, well, as long as it goes let's pick in. it up. Yeah, let's pick it up and see how it looks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the one to the just to the right, right looks yeah. a little smaller. Is is that uh, am I seeing things or is that also loose? Uh, possibly, but actually, the one that's sort of hidden by the arm right now has that same sort of attachment. It might be really giant. Just though. pick I that one know. up that's loose and let's have a look at it first. Okay. I mean, that one's Good. sitting right there. Oh, yeah. yeah you never know. It may break up. That's a total. That's a keeper. That'll fit. That is a total keeper. Yeah. But let's. Um, 
Yeah, rotate and put it in them lasers and see how big it is. Yeah. I'm to get a good grip there. I'm gonna move your uh, camera. Oh, that's okay. I can I could use the practice here. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's not huge. That's yeah. Reasonable right. size. Yeah. Yeah. Let's rotate and image it. Little sea spider. Oh, that's some a nice crust. Beauty. Oh yeah. yeah, that's some good crust on there. Might be some associated animals in there. I think I see a small isopod. Oh, uh, that what's that shiny oh mucus. Bit? We got mucus too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what about mucus. the shiny right to the right of it, <laughs> like glassy? Cool. It's pretty okay. big. It's long, yeah. but it's, you know. Oh, we got a box to fit it, that's for sure. I think so. Yeah, okay. it's pretty big rock, but it's not like gargantuan. I think, not uh, gargantuan. I think we're going to have to. Okay, starboard box. Okay. Yeah. Ready uh, to go to the starboard box? Yeah. Yeah, F. Yep. Bubble, two starboard cams, and a dive salvo. You ready for the salvo? Yes, I am. Coming up. And you want the right cameras, probably, yes. right? Ada, what sample number is this? We're going to open up the box. This will be sample number 35. Are we getting a Niskin here as well? Yes. Why am Can I you not? go wide, please, video? The arm just decided not to halt. I got to make sure everything's still good. Yep. You got to go to the far box, I guess. I may have one in the yeah. close one. Could be a little tall. We don't have to close the box all the way. It's not going to fit with the box closed. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, I think the only thing we're planning on putting in the starboard box from now on are rocks anyway. Is that true? Uh, there's some... There's a stick. Oh, there's a stick in there. Yeah, we don't want that to go. Um, yeah, we're going to need to get a smaller rock unfortunately unless yeah, if it doesn't close i can't i can't see this going in and closing there are some animals in there okay that close, we don't want close. to escape very deceptive rock <laughs> just sit it on the porch yeah could do that's a viable we, we could look at those some of those other ones that are maybe there's something that broke off as well you want to go back to the... Yeah, you can give me the regular. That'll put it for now. Uh, how are we doing here? I'm going to look up and see how... Yeah, we're a little bit behind. I can still close. see the down cam still good. Yeah, just... Oof, Bubble, you're driving me crazy. Um, well, that was a shame. So I could try a couple of these that are in front of us here, probably. Uh, okay. What about that one, like bottom? That one on the bottom of the screen right there. Right in front of the schnozzle. Or just to the, the left of it. Okay.
Oh yeah, that'll go. Oh, you got it. That'll go. I'm gonna grab it and regrip here. Let's image this one too. In bubble. Oh, nice. The backwards bubble control. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's a good size. Good looking rock. Wait, can you rotate it? Sure thing. Some oxidation, yeah, on one of those sides. Maybe that could be that part could be broken off. Some iron oxidation, red splotches. Very nice. Yeah, it's a nice rock. Great. Victory. Well, not yet. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> that's that was probably going to go in the same compartment. I think that's too yeah. big for a small bin. I agree. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Good, good rock collection. Okay, sample That's tray in. Still sample 35, and we're going to go for a Niskin sample next. you can do um, bottle three, that would be the next in sequence. Okay, um, just because of all the disturbed sediment, did you want to come up at all, or is this a fine place to be for this Niskin? Um, yeah, maybe, uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, why don't we come up like a, a meter or so Get out of the muck. Roger that. Just in case. For EDNA, I know it's helpful to not be around sediment. Okay. Um, so that would be helpful for that. I'm guessing it's probably not. Great. Yeah, not a, not a problem. Hi, it's Coralie. I'm listening right now. Um, it's okay because I'm going to filter it anyways. Okay. Okay. If we can do it here, that's definitely easier. So. Yeah. If it's, if it's cleared enough, we can probably use this for EDNA too. Okay. Three, you said? So, blue. Right.
Yeah, okay. got it. That's a good sample there. This can three. Sample three six. <laughs> so tangled. Okay. That's better. Well, that's the rock we had to leave behind. Oh, it would have fit. I'm you really think oh, so? Oh, yeah. <laughs> was, Dan, Dan pretty, would not have let me get away with that. Oh, no, I was definitely would have been a Dan. Oh, okay. I did not oh. think there was any way that was going to fit. Oh, oh, yeah. We would have made it work. Okay. I like our new rock. If you had, if you had <laughs> said... I didn't want to push it. Yeah, yeah. I would have done it. <laughs> I was, I'm so I'm just riding the bus here. Okay. <laughs> if you had said it was gonna fit, I would have done it. I think it might have poked up a bit, but like you know, you just close it as far as you can go. And then the stick wanders out, and then it's a new species of stick. Okay. And <laughs> we got feel a, guilty for an entire. We got a great cruise. rock. We got a great rock, and the Wait door is all the way closed. Uh, what What is the stick? I don't know. It's a wood fall. It's, okay. Um, it's not the stick itself. I'm pretty sure the stick is not not alive. Um, <laughs> it's not a live stick. Not a live stick. Yeah. It's not a new species of stick. No. Probably the uh, animals that are living on or inside oh, okay. the wood. Cool. We don't want them getting away. Yeah, there's a prior trauma here, Josh. I let a I let a new species right. of sea star get away because I put yeah. a too big rock in and it didn't close. <laughs> but we got it on the last. That's true. That's yeah, true. we redeemed ourselves. I got a cool shot of Ashley taking it out of Herc. Oh, awesome. Are you in auto XY? I am not in auto anything. So did they collect the stick because to clean to clean up the seafloor because it was garbage or because there was interesting organisms on it? Uh, it did have some animals on it. Yep. Yeah, the wood falls are uh, kind of unique little habitats unto themselves. Uh, you, oftentimes, you find animals that are uh, live exclusively on wood falls. Um, there are some uh, mollusks, I think they're in the genus Xylophagia, that are uh, wood eaters. How it can't possibly pay to be a wood eater out here. <laughs> that seems like a crazy gamble to bet you're living on. Maybe there are other p places that are closer to shore that are pretty deep, you know. Oh, and maybe they transport it out on that wood or something. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, wow. This is not the place to be a sponge, but it definitely was once, because this guy's big. That is really big. Go for zoom. There's a little kind sponge of, growing off of it. Oh, it's no like, kidding. Uh, yeah. And it looks like that packing material they use. Yeah. Yeah. Dense paper. Crispy, crunchy sponge. Is this a sponge you think that got so big? Was that one of the things we were talking about earlier when corals and sponges get so big they basically like fall down or do you think it might have been something else that yeah something uh it gave way at the base because it didn't break off right oh can no, i have that back for a sec sorry so josh i can't tell there if the base is connected got a to that close. rock but it could have been the rock itself came loose oh, it's just massive uh, or if it just broke off the base it's just the, the base wasn't uh, established enough on the rock They don't grow that like that at all. They they definitely gonna be 
up and pr probably perpendicular to the flow. Okay, you can have it now. Mm -hmm. Are you guys good for me to call in a move, or do you want to get a little farther out? Um, I, think we're, I think we're good. It'll take a while to translate. Great. Yeah, no. Sorry, I didn't mean that was just a reaction. Yeah. Statement. <laughs> and yeah, I just go slower. Sorry, didn't mean. You're good. Step on you there. You're good. Can we move 50 meters bearing 145? <laughs> you know what? If it stuck out that far, he would have been able to grab it and take it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would have gone in on an angle. Oh, well, Dan's never going to say it's not going to fit. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll make it fit somehow. Shave it down. <laughs> <laughs> So for those of you watching at home, we've got some questions about uh, our rock sampling. And we've been collecting rock samples across the seamount um, at different depths. And we did the same thing on our last dive. So we collected that sample at just about 2,900 meters. Um, but we use these rock samples to get a better idea to, and learn more about these um, seamounts and their geologic origin and history, um, and especially interested in this ferromanganese crust that you could see on that rock as we were collecting that. And a couple of viewers have wondered about those colored ropes that you saw. Um, so we were pulling basically a Niskin bottle um, and collecting water samples in the same area where we were collecting that rock sample. Um, so the next time we do that, we'll do that. When we take future samples too, you can watch um, either on our quad view or usually satellite feed three, you can kind of see to the side of our ROV Hercules. Thank you, Steve, if you look at it right now. Um, you can see we basically pull that and go for zoom. open um, so you can watch that sampling in process. What are you? Oh, snail. Cool. Ooh. Snail is. Must be getting a tug here. Are those like antennae or I don't tentacles? Uh, tentacles? Yeah. The snail has no, tentacles? tentacles? Like a nautilus? No, not exactly. Um, they're probably more sensory, but oh, okay. they're just called. Common, common name, tentacles. Okay. Probably a more precise term for them. Neat. So how many meters off of our target depth did we actually get that rock? Too uh, many. Yeah, 11. Okay. Uh, okay. Something to, uh, yeah, I beat, guess, something to beat next yeah, time. Yeah, I guess we have room to improve. It was about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the losers say. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, spoken by, spoken <laughs> like someone who got there second. <laughs> we, we, we had our chance. The last group was approxim approximately six meters off. Although, hold on, we can get some, we can get some details oh here. Let's go to the instant replay. <laughs> Instant replay. Can we put up a graphic on the screen. <laughs> Actually, could you do some drawing on the screen? Maybe some circles and X's and lines. <laughs> I need to do. Uh, I need to look back at the last team's rock sample to get a better idea of what their depth was actually when they collected it. I honestly feel like the rocks let us down, right? Like there yeah. weren't any loose ones. Wow. I agree. Let's blame it on the rocks. Blame the rocks. <laughs> I guess we could have moved laterally along the seam. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. Maybe we didn't want it bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did. <laughs> Steve is not letting us off the hook at all. <laughs> Internal shade throwing. Keep us updated on that replay, Steve. Yeah, so their their depth uh, of collection was actually 3366. Uh, so. And what did they report? 
Uh, they reported 3,300. They were off by uh, 66 meters. Yeah. That's plus uh, another six. So 72 meters. So so we are actually the most accurate one. Okay. Yeah. That feels a little like a little bit of redemption. The next closest um, was actually. Our other rock, maybe? About 30, 34 meters was the that closest be nothing. before us. Mm. Okay, we have some time. I'm going to look at this here sponge. But all in all, I think it was a successful uh, collection. Can I get a zoom? Seen this sponge before. I'm just. Uh, Paul's going to hold IT position current. while he adjusts heading for the current adjustments. Sounds uh, good. Yeah. Okay, we'll see if we can find other things to look at. What else do we got? Some corals over here. gotten a few questions about whether we see litter at these depths and we have seen some litter and debris down here a couple times on these dives a few people wonder if we collect it we did on this um dive the watch before us collected a can that they found but typically we do not, uh try and save room for our geologic and biological samples on our rovs yeah where did they end up putting that can Uh, can. The, the can? Where did they end up storing it? Okay. With a rock, yeah. Okay. Okay, go on. Now, uh, kind of racking my brain about deciding which repository to send the beer can to. There's not a national repository. <laughs> oh, there must be. I mean, several, in fact. I think any recycling depot. Would yeah. Get your nickel back or whatever. Yeah, if in the state of Hawaii. <laughs> I, definitely I bet it's 10 cents in Hawaii, right? Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Defray some of the costs of retrieving it off the seafloor. I wonder if you can get interest back for that. Oh, interesting. 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 Sorry. <laughs> So sorry. Nickel deposit plus interest. Over how many years? Uh, at least probably 20 or 30. Cool. Mm. Um, remind me again what he said his new goal heading was. He's moving towards 125. Okay. And he seems to be there. Yeah. Little doodads glued to the rock here. Oh, 
Go ahead. Roger, that sounds good. Thank you. All right, moves getting put in. Okay. Same thing, very one, four, five, fifty meters. Of the system, eh? The, the current tells him something, so he moves this heading over to where he thinks it should go to match the current, and the current just moves over. The current moves because it's just a derived current. Because the ship moves, so it's yeah. just like a, yeah. Yeah, you're just chasing a ghost. You're just, exactly. Yeah. And then magically the wind starts coming over too. Pretty neat how it works. <laughs> I knew we could have such effect over the environmental conditions. Now it's saying the wind's up to 25 knots. Yeah. That definitely increased in the last 15 minutes. Yeah, it's showing a spike here on this one too, but only up to 20. No, you're good. Oop. Uh, but we're we're almost at waypoint three right now. Yeah, there's some things here. Um, the current's pretty sluggish on the bottom in this area, but you know, there's still things. Yeah, unstuck. Oh, it looks like this one's root just tore up. Hmm. Okay, go away. Got a few people wondering how long we've been diving for on this dive. I think we're at just over 11 hours, and this is going to be a 24-hour dive. So we've still got a few more watches um, through this evening and tomorrow morning. And for those of you who may just be joining us, uh, this is our second dive so far on this cruise, and we have been exploring the flank of an unnamed seamount, calling it Seamount G. Uh, and we've just been following about an eight kilometer long transect. Um, and we're just moving up slope, collecting samples as we go. So we just collected a rock sample and have collected a few at differing depths. Um, been collecting some biological samples as well. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Right now we're kind of just looking for any biological life we may see. Some people have asked about our green lasers, um, and we have those on. They help us measure the size that of that thing. Oop. Oh, is that a sponge? Yeah, it's a, it looks like it. Uh, yeah. A sponge skeleton. They're it's pretty like dramatic. Yeah. It almost looks like bones. It yeah. does. If you were uh, a ways away, you wouldn't be able to tell if it was. Yeah. Vertebrae and rib cage. Vertebrae, yeah. Go for zoom. Oh, mushroom coral too. Mastis. Hmm. So you can see those lasers right on those there. Those are 10 centimeters apart. So it's kind of a good example of how we could use that to estimate the size of something we're looking at.
zoom on that mushroom pearl. Yeah. I think this might be the first one of the dive. Th this actually could be uh, a different genus, possibly Pseudoanthemastus, which has a bit of a different morphology, but they're largely indistinguishable from, in my opinion, uh, I don't really, can't really see the characters here that I need to, to really make a designation on that. So for the most part, uh, these things were recently revised. Um, the genus okay, Anthemastus was split up into a couple different, uh, or a, a couple of species within Anthemastus were transferred to different uh, genera, genera uh, like Heteropolypus, and then some things that we used to call Anthemastus are now a different genus, Pseudoanthemastus. And the differences are largely small scale. You know, it's something you'd have to look at in the, in the, with the specimen in hand. This big lettuce sponge looks like it has some living sponge on it. Go for zoom. Yeah, there might be a little tiny bit of live sponge left on this one. Still chugging along. It seems like a lot of these sponges, though, from what I've seen, they've they usually fail at the base. You know, not doesn't break necessarily, but the entire base plate comes off. Uh, like that one detached pretty much on the base plate there. It's interesting. There's nothing on the rock, though, in terms of yeah. Any signs of where the base there? I, I think that that one probably fell and it just landed there. Yeah. Yeah, that rock looks clear. But I'm wondering if it would. And if they did detach from, from the base, oh, there's a xenophyophore. Oh, what now? Xenophyophore. Okay. Right there. Under the laser. What is that? Yeah, that's a. Um, I looks like still a. Still don't see it. Looks yeah. like a ball of sediment, and uh, that's pretty much what it is um, okay. for the most part. But a xenophyophore is a single-celled, an uh, single-celled, protist, uh, foraminiferan, that. Uh, lives in in or on the deep sea benthos and uh, kind of creates this house out of gluing together sediments. Um, but inside that house is a single-celled organism. What is happening? A that? giant single-celled organism. That's an acrobatic snail. Oh, oh yep. okay. Fleeing the yes. scene. I'll put it in the chat so you can see it there. That's normally how they get around? That's how they, it's like a escape wild thing. I think. It makes a really big scene out of it. Yeah. Huh. Uh, that's, Steve, uh, question yes. for you. Yes. Am I correct in assuming that now that we're at waypoint three, we're heading up to waypoint four? Yeah, we're going to go straight up slope. Awesome. Um, as, uh, we, as we have been going, no rush. Okay, sounds good. Um, let's move our bearing to 160. I'll keep us going perpendicular, upslope. Okay, sounds good. Lots of Bridge, smaller nodules yeah. here as well. It's carpeted. Seems like these. Can we please move 100 meters? More moderate bearing slopes. Bearing 160. Are very productive for nodules. That's correct, thank you. Go for Zoom. Great, another Amulogorgia colony been the star of the dive so far. I think we've seen more of those on this dive than just a, maybe the previous dive also. But I suspect as we start to come up on top of waypoint four here, we're going to see a larger biodiversity.
the nodules are just, you know, filling in every single gap uh, in the rock where it's not going to tumble downhill. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> they, they look a little smaller here than what we were seeing down below. I still haven't heard a good answer from, uh, oh, about that nodule question. Yeah, we'll have to ask Adam or someone else. This one looks like a, might be another Brisingid. Can't tell. Do a half zoom on that. Okay, let's go. Can go in further. Yeah, Brisson Jed, right? This one's kind of laying flat against the rock. Usually they have their arm tips up, trying to feed up in the flow, but this one's relaxing. <laughs> nice video. a big lobster on the right on the right give me a hint oh yes i think that's him. a squat lobster oh yeah oh that's a big one too it is big Yeah, that squat lobster, for context, is probably about as big as your hand, maybe a bit bigger. He's super big. Go for zoom. Yeah, I think that would put this one in the genus Mutidopsis. Just uh, by it, sheer size? No, it's, um, it's morphological characteristics I'm looking at. Just hold zoom. Awesome, thank you. It's, I haven't it's seen an old one, one this though. big before. Yeah. Okay, come on. Front. Great. I think those are like the front pinchers are interesting. Yeah, they're just that, like, like dangling down. And they're like armoring almost on them. It's like they have three little. Yeah. Can I get a spelling on that? That's neat. Um, Unidopsis? Yeah. Um, yeah, interestingly, they, they kind of look similar when you look at them side by side, but these squat lobsters are actually more closely related to hermit crabs. In fact, they belong to the same group hmm. uh, than the true crabs. Uh, earlier this year, I don't know, uh, there was a kind of a funny thing going around the internet about how the crab body plan evolved many, many times over uh, the course of evolutionary history, all kind of independently of each other. Um, they call it like carcinization or something yeah, like that? Car carcin yeah, carcinization. So I'm, I too I'm, read the internet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 there was a uh, yeah so I'm I'm pretty convinced that if we do see extraterrestrial life it'll probably be a crab a coconut crab more specifically coconuts wow. in space yeah <laughs> yeah so what what are some examples of the different families or species that don't have common ancestors but have that same shape let's pull up the article and see what it says
some viewers are asking if that's the normal coloration of those squat lobsters. And we've seen a lot of those, that kind of bright white color. Um, but also in our last dive, we saw some kind of like pink and purpley squat lobsters as well. So those are generally the colors we've seen on these watches. But that's why they're easy to spot often is that bright Sorry, white Sam? color. Sorry for blinding us. How you doing good? Nice. Yeah, this is one of the crinoids, uh, non-stalked crinoids. I'm not sure if these uh, have swimming capacity. Sometimes even the ones that aren't stalked may not necessarily have the capacity to swim. I think this is one of the ones that doesn't have that ability. You think it would crawl or just kind of stuck? Steve, did you hear Steve's question? Steve, what was that? Steve, can you hear each other? <laughs> no, I was I was uh, reading an article. I didn't catch that question. Can you repeat it. Did you think that crinoid uh, could crawl along the seafloor, or do you think it's immobile? You know, um, I, I'm I'm sure they have the ability to move around, but they're not very active. You know, once they find that that rock or that perch that they're happy on that gives them enough food. I think they'll stay there for quite a while. It's a cool uh, shot of that nodule field in Argus right now. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh, yeah, neat. Yeah, so some examples of those uh, animals that form crab-like body plans are like the true crabs. You can think of that's you know, that's cheating. Those are crabs. Well, they evolved somehow. <laughs> um, so then, uh, within the um, the other group of what we call crabs, the things that are look crab like like the hermit crabs there's a bunch of other different organisms like squat lobsters um which take took on the crab body plan you know um doesn't this look encrusting somehow king crabs as well am i am i like losing my mind that looks oh that big, weird that looks like, like a big circle base. thing yeah i see that yeah what yeah, that is might that? be a big base old base a sponge oh that's a huge that would be huge oh, wow. yeah Video, thank you for that reading my mind Zoom. I wouldn't have thought fast enough to call for it. I appreciate it. Yep. So Steve, we're seeing these like big kind of layers of nodules. It's a couple of viewers have called it almost like pavement. Yeah. Why or what's stopping these nodules from fusing onto slabs or kind of these other layers of rock that we see? Do you know? Uh, you know, I'm sure over time there, some of the nodules fused together, like the the first rock we picked up, right, a little bit ago, mm -hmm. uh, looked like it was two rocks kind of fused together. So eventually all this seafloor kind of gets crusted over, but it takes millions and millions and millions of years to build up enough of that crust. Um, it's possible that the nodules just aren't there yet, but there's also the possibility that, um, you know, there's something about the movement of the water around the nodules that is prohibiting them from becoming stuck together. Hmm. Somebody's been doing some digging here. Huh. Oh, yeah, Maybe they... another ROV. Or beaked whales. Yeah, or beaked whales. Beaked that was whale. the other thing yep. I was thinking of. Yeah. 
I haven't seen uh, scours like that in uh, nodule field, but you know, since we saw that beaked whalebone last cruise, yep, yep. Uh, you know, it's pretty obvious that they might use this kind of habitat for whatever they do down here. I don't think we've ever really established what they're doing if they're diving down deep for feeding purposes or something else. Might have some ripples here as well in the sand. Oh yeah, beautiful. How deep were those beaked whale scars that you guys saw? Maybe it was in the med? Do you remember that? Oh, your the med was pre Steve. I think we were off of California when we okay. saw when we thought we saw something that might have been beaked whale okay. markings. So what's the known depth that beak whales have dived? Do they have any proof of that? Thousands of meters, I think. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, so we saw wild. We saw the bone at 2,600 meters, about okay. okay. 2,690. So I, I, I think that there are oh, reports of there. them going down to the 3,000s yeah. of meters. That's very impressive. Yeah. Andrea. I wonder if we can get it with a few more lights off. I'm not sure which one. mess though. around, yeah. I might try to zoom on um, Herc Argus too as well, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to get it set up here. Just zoomed a bit. Well, I'll come back out. It's a pretty good look at them there. Yeah. I get too close and I just sort of wash them all it's out. It's a good look from Argus as well. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Andrea, if you're watching, or Emil. There's your. Those oh, are the symmetrical ones, right? So, yeah. what did that indicate? Symmetrical was like. That there was, uh, was waves basically that okay. go both directions. Okay, and the okay, the asymmetrical ones were current based. Yeah, I mean the, the current is one consistent direction. Okay. But I didn't necessarily see any splits in those, like yeah. forking. I don't know, but I'm yeah. not the geologist. Okay, you can go wide on all of them. All wide. Awesome. Thank you. I love this like outcrop here. It's very yeah. neat. Yeah. There. So I'll try and illuminate it a little better. I'm I'm impressed. We're gonna have to do some more east-west comparisons on some of these seamounts because if this is a